If you missed the first tackle at the line of scrimmage or a couple of yards beyond, the pursuit was good as a team last night, and you did not let them get a lot of double-digit gains last night, which can kill a team. Well, that was another thing that we had worked on during practice was to take and wrap up, and uh, we knew they were physical, and so uh, coming strong at us, and we knew we had to take and wrap them up and gang tackle and uh, pursue the football and uh, not give up that uh, the long gainer. And uh, we were pleased with our... You know, we, I think, Craig, uh, we, we saw the game last night as a bonus. You know, we had the big win over uh, West Central, 46 to 42. We were in a sectional championship, uh, 4A. Uh, the winner goes on a state tournament and uh, win two games and you get in the Dome semifinals. And we really saw this as a plus for our season. And uh, the guys were really looking forward to it. And, and we, we went in there with, uh, you know, thinking that nobody expected us to win. Um, we didn't have any pressure on us. And uh, to get out there and do the best you can. and. And uh, with the first uh, half, we were pleased with the way they played. We couldn't help but be, be proud of those guys, where they take and put forth. And, and if you can keep them out of the end zone, you're doing a good job. So um, I was happy with the way we played there. Well, I think you had a, a crowd wondering there at halftime, you know, maybe this Hillcrest team is good enough to hang in there. And, and you did hang in there longer than I think, uh, uh, well, most of the teams that Underwood has played this year did. And uh, as the game went on, you could see maybe the defense starting to tire. And when you run offensively uh, 77 plays which Underwood did last night and defensively you do start to feel it that's right and you're going in the line all the time and uh, they, they, they they played power football and did a couple counters with cross bucks but not much it was mostly dives and powers and and uh, an occasional reverse but uh, basically when you go in the line and then we uh, rotated with Scott Hansen was in there on defensive line for us he went the whole game there uh, uh, we started Chris Mon on the defensive tackle spot and and he had the job of going up against Matt Mark, and then we'd bring in uh, Brooks Walters to go in there. So those three guys played on the inside and and uh, really had their work cut out for them, but uh, I was proud of the way they hung in there, too. Called Matt Erickson's number a lot last night on tackles. He played as fine a game probably as a linebacker for you as he has this year. Yes, right, and he, he got in on a number of tackles, like you mentioned. Heidbetter played a good game at defense. Uh, uh, our stats said that he was in on, not assisting, that's assisting solo tackles together, in on 25, yep. and uh, and Erickson was in on 23. So those two guys really, on that side of the football, did a good job for us. Let's talk about your offense. Uh, the offense that you were able to muster, it seemed, came through the air, and Nate Endrood has come such a long way for you. That was such a potent part of your comeback win against West Central at passing game, and uh, when he has the time to set up and throw, and, and last night there were some times when he was pressured, but for the most part he did have the time that you needed to get your pass routes developed. That's right. Uh, you know, John Bryan came up and, and uh, wrote a good article on Nate last week and uh, uh, how he has uh, matured into a, a good quarterback for us. And, and you could see it again last night when he was pressured, scrambled a little bit, and then he dumped it off to Quam a couple times because that's one of our reads. And, and uh, when the guys were covered and there's, and, and there's a heavy rush, then we take a look to our halfbacks to dump it off to him. He really did it. He's really improved on that, Quam and uh, Holden, Evan Newman, the guys we've had in the backfield there have taken, uh, we've we got some good yardage out of that. And uh, uh, we, we, uh, we, we, we knew they were in their four-man line and, and Cam Willer middle linebacker, we thought we could take and hit like eight yard routes, uh, 10 and so on. And, uh, but you, know, you, you can't do it every time. You have to mix it up with some running plays and just hope you, you get some yardage there. And the, it wasn't for us uh, on the line of scrimmage last night. If we could get by, the, get, get by them, uh, then we knew we had to you know, work on the linebackers coming at us. So um, it was, it's a dirt, very difficult team to run against. They I, cover I so much ground laterally. They're really a good defensive team. Yeah, they do get to the ball carrier in a hurry. A uh, number of times there were two or three people there. And a lot of times your backs would get by the first man or break that first tackle but only to be driven back by a second and third player arriving on the scene. Well, not only they're, they're good quickness and yeah. good speed. They get there in a hurry. And uh, there's a couple times where, where I thought maybe we'd get more yards than we did, and all of a sudden it closed in pretty pretty fast. So, um, but uh, it was a good game. We, we really enjoyed being there uh, uh, in the second half, uh, marching down there. I think one of the key possessions where we didn't get closer to the goal line when we wanted to there, we're, we're, we're on, uh, I don't forget what yard line was, about the 15, 14, 14 yeah. or 15. I think you got inside the 10 and then had a five-yard penalty. Okay, we so. got inside the 10, and I think it was like third down and one. And uh, I mentioned to Nate, uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to go up the middle, but if they plug it, then we'll take and do an audible. And, and 
if you remember, uh, we, we thought about that, and then he, did, he didn't call the audible, but then Booksy, uh, th there was a little timing problem on that, so right. we, uh, we got a five-yard penalty, and then we didn't decay, and then we didn't get in. Then we got to do something else, take and make the first down, and so then we didn't make it. But I think if we'd have scored there, Craig, we could've, it would have been a little momentum builder for us. And you needed that because the second half did not start well. You, I'm sure you would have preferred that drive to happen on your first possession of the half, but to their credit, Skip Lee kicked that ball, a tough one to handle in that second half opening kickoff, and you wound up down inside your 10-yard line. And the one thing you just couldn't afford right there was the thing that happened, the fumble. That's right. And we, we mentioned that. We said we don't want to fumble deep in our own territory, but you wonder if you should even bring it up. Uh, but uh, that happens, you know, and uh, that that wasn't the one play that lost the game for us uh, because uh, that, uh, there's a number of things that happens, uh, of course, when you lose a game. But um, that was a good momentum builder for them. They got the touchdown, the extra point. And uh, those kickoffs were hard for us to handle. We just soon have them get in the air all the way down the goal line and run it back because we got a good, uh, we figured we got a good uh, uh, kick-receiving scheme and can get the ball up to the middle of the field and get us a good position. And that was one reason why we didn't maybe go to the air sooner than we wanted to last night, uh, because uh, we were always deep in our own territory in the kickoff. And so we wanted to get a few more yards up ground so we can take and put it in the air. You kind of wonder, you know, when you're, when you're on the, within the 5 and 15, if you should put it up in the air that much. And, and uh, if you do it a lot, you know, it can come back and haunt you. But um, uh, I, I thought you mentioned Matt Erickson on defense. I, th I thought he did a good job on offense, too. He caught four receptions. And uh, we, uh, we, Michael Levang was uh, one of our key receivers. And uh, also Newman caught uh, some passes last night. And he had a good second effort on one touchdown there in the Play second Play of the game, half, so. I thought, as far as the excitement goes. <laughs> yeah, you know, the guy had him by the shirt. And he just, we, we, we just talked about that before. I said we need a little bit more second effort now on halfbacks running the ball and ends catching it and just take it, you know, just tell yourself that you're going to break those tackles and go for the touchdown. He did for us. That was good. You, we talked about the fumble leading to the touchdown and then the, the drive, and I, I thought the turning point, maybe not so much that first touchdown there in the second half because you were still within two and you could get it back, and you had that real nice drive that we just talked about. You got inside the 10, the penalty pushed it back, and you wound up turning it over on downs, and that started this way, I think, where Underwood really took control because not only did you, you turn the ball over on downs and come up empty on that drive, but Underwood was able to go uh, 66 yards in 12 plays, eat up some time, and punch it in. And, and on that drive, there were a couple of times when you had him hurting. I think first and 20 after a, a, a holding pl uh, call, moved them back, and they busted a 28-yard run to keep the drive going on that yeah. first down. And you, you took a timeout after that play to go out and I, and I think talk to the defense and settle them down a little bit and let them catch their wind, which I thought was a great timeout, but at that point, I think, is where Underwood really took control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we remember that, because uh, they, they they started, what, on their own, what, 29? Own 14. Uh, okay, own 14, and then uh, had the 12-play 12, 12 drive, and <clears throat> after the penalty, um, we thought we could, you know, stop them, but then they had the good run and, and got the first down, so that was a key for them, too. Paul Quam on the inside, I think, uh, had a good game for us, too. He was in a number of tackles and and uh, blitzed in there a couple times, causing some problems. And he's been a good leader for us on defense all year. He's really a steady football player and a good little blocker out front. And, you you know, again, we <clears throat> went down to gym before we, we stretched out, um, down the, out in the Hillcrest gym before we got on a bus to get over there. And, you know, I don't know what the program says, uh, 26, okay, he's 155, I tell you. I don't know if he's even 155, Craig. He plays middle linebacker, and he's probably over 140, 145 for sure. But, you know, for a guy that's in the playing middle linebacker, he sure does a good job for his size. That was at the start of the season. He's lost some weight over the, the course of 10 games, I think. But he's maybe. gained it in confidence and experience. So. Yeah, you mentioned the key word, steady. I was thinking that all the time you were talking about him, and he is as steady a performer as the Comets have had on the field, game in and game out this year. I feel like I've gotten to know this team a little bit. I think I've seen you five times now. Well, we really appreciate that, KBRF, carrying our radios. That was really great last night to have you there again. Like, we have a lot of listeners that take and listen to our football games, and they're really happy it's on. Well, it was a lot of fun to be over there, and uh, I thought it was a nice night for a football game, really. I mean, we're talking November 6th, and there were a few snow flurries out there, but the wind wasn't really uh, too much of a factor, and, and it seemed like a pretty pleasant night. It was, and... Uh, the, the field was a little hard, uh, but uh, that, you know, as far as the conditions, uh, it was, uh, for that night, it was good to take and play on. 
the, the guys weren't cold at all, and and uh, we want to thank uh, Wally Berge and Paula Vang for putting together our little warming houses over on the side there, and they had uh, carpeting over on the side so the, for the feet and so on, and and uh, that really made a big difference. Guys could run in there and run out uh, and then stay nice and warm, and uh, you get out there when it's cold, and you really don't feel like playing too much, especially with the hands and the feet, ears and so on, and so that was nice to have last night. We really appreciate that. Have you guys run up against as tough a tandem of running backs as Evervold and Nelson? And Evervold is just a punishing runner. I think we used that term last time we talked about him. Um, not this year. Uh, uh, West Central had some good halfbacks with Thronson and and uh, Schultz. Yerkes? Yerkes, okay. And uh, they're, they're, they're a good team there, too. And so we saw uh, Clinton Graceville had uh, Gibbs, I think, uh, Gibson running the ball or and uh, Beersley Browns Valley has excellent halfbacks, but if, when you put the, the good halfbacks together with the, with the line that can really move them out of the way, you got yourself a good football team, Craig. And, and uh, we could see it, you know, where last night, where when, if you can move them out of the way, you got yards, but if you can't, you got a long night. And just hope that you can connect on the air, and maybe get some breaks. But if you don't get them, then, uh, you know, it, it doesn't work out. But, you know, as far as really sticking in there and never quitting, Really, uh, our guys didn't quit, and really, I was really proud to be their coach for the season and last night. And because they didn't give up, I thought their their sportsmanship was where he wanted it, and uh, I guess that's what it's all about, too, Craig. They didn't back down, that's for they sure. They really did, and it was uh, fun to see the the mutual respect that the two teams <coughs> shared at the end. I am a very staunch believer in that. As a coach, at the end of a <coughs> game, you acknowledge your competitors' uh, ability if they beat you, and and uh, go through that that handshake as as a true sportsman would and, and I thought that was nice to see last night yeah we made sure that we were going to shake hands with them before, after the game and uh, because uh, that, that I expect that of the guys and we want to wish them the best of luck and luck and some of our guys went over and shook hands with linked as well and and uh, you know they beat us the better team football team won we just we just hope they can keep going now and uh, I'm sure they will we're our seniors uh, want to mention M. Craig uh, Chris Mon, Darren Heidbretter Paul Quam we got nine of them Nate Andrew, Matt Erickson, Matt Larson, Tyson Chilson, Ryan Sem, Jim Erickson, and uh, our cheerleaders and our cheerleading advisor, Candace Berge. And uh, we had great fan support again last night. Um, my two assistant coaches, Paul Levang, Rich Seelan, I want to thank them. And uh, Your two again, official uh, assistant coaches. You have many others, I'm sure. Yeah, oh, yes. And, and one, tell you, one of my assistant coaches lives in Moria. Did you know that? No. Yes, he does. He lives in Morehead, and I get pointers from my mom every week. It's my father-in-law. It's his <laughs> golden winning anniversary. And uh, we want to wish Arnie and Venda a uh, happy 50th anniversary. And today's Great. the day, I guess. We're going right. up there, and he's going to treat us for supper, I think. That's the way it works. Well, I'm planning on that. <laughs> okay. But, you know, not we lost, I may have to uh, take and uh, treat him, but we're really looking forward to that. And I was listening to Atchison on the radio talking about, you know, the, the football and the things that are involved and becoming a family and stuff. And... And I tell you, I'm pretty proud of my family that I have, and on both sides of the fence. And uh, in Moorhead down there with Arnie and Venda, and, and Glenn and Dee down on Dalton. And right. uh, Glenn just built the basketball cage for our, our basketball. So we keep in touch, and, and hopefully we can pass it on to our youngsters. Wow, that's great. And it has been an outstanding year. You have five and five season. Everybody, I think, wants to course have that unbeaten season. That's your first goal. We want to be undefeated. We don't want to lose a game. We want to win the conference championship. But when you look at it, above all, you want to compete to the ability of your kids and your team, and you want to see improvement week to week. I think you've seen that this year, and you can come out of this fall season with that 500 record knowing that uh, you got the most out of these kids for That's 10 right. weeks. You know, I think some people thought we were going to be rebuilding this year. And uh, we, 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 we went a little bit further. Maybe people expected, and that's what you can ask for the guys. And I'm proud of that fact. They're a great bunch of guys. We had a little team meeting in our chapel afterwards, and the seniors talked, and some underclassmen talked, and set some goals for next year. And, and uh, you know, a number of them said the greatest part of the season, the greatest part of, the, of their athletic career was, you know, uh, this football season. And I and, uh, really appreciate that, so what the, some of the guys said last night. And uh, it was a good way to take and end it. And, uh, um, <clears throat> It was just all in out, uh, just an excellent season for us, Craig, at Hillcrest, and, and I think they represented our school well. Really proud of the guys. All right, Coach. Will you enjoy your, your day in uh, Moorhead? Well, enjoy it very much. I think uh, 
Depends on who's buying all the Depend on what I order tonight. Knowing you, you'll enjoy it either way. <laughs> I so. think so. All right. Richard Risbert of the Hillcrest Comets. They uh, had their season end last night at the hands of the Underwood Rockets, and they aren't the first one. They won't be the last one, I don't believe, this year to have their season end at the hands of that football team. Underwood wins it 37-6 to, to capture the Section 4 nine-man championship. Thank <laughs> you.